afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to welcome you to the SEMS International and DTI's live cast of Working Under the New Normal series. And today we're going to ask DTI about leasing and rental businesses. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. I'm Joel Santos, the president of SEMS International Business School. And this is a very interesting topic because a lot of us are really um, wondering how we're going to manage all of our commercial and residential leases. And today we have really uh, very good uh, panel of speakers. So let me introduce them to you. Our main speaker is Attorney Ruth Costello. She is the DTI Under Secretary for Consumer Protection Group. So she has been working with the city government for a number of years from 1994 to 2001 and as i was uh, as i was i was looking for more things about uh Yusek Ruth the we came upon a funny a, a funny uh, i don't call it funny but an interesting youtube interview we saw it and it's a trivia and she was asked and uh, we found that that she was choosing between being a nun or a lawyer so very interesting choices, right? Quite extreme. But we have her, not as Sister Ruth, but as Attorney Ruth. So we already know what she has chosen. Uh, let's say hello to Attorney Ruth first. Can we see her on video? Hi, Attorney. Hi, hi, Joel. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Okay. Thank you for being with us. So Attorney Ruth will be with us for the next series of Ask DTI live cast that we will be sharing with you later. Okay, and then next after after Sasabiko sister Ruth. <laughs> after I was going to say, <laughs> I did, unfortunately, I did not become sister Ruth. <laughs> I think I think a, somebody in government who planned to be a sister is actually good. <laughs> so, okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. I think the role changes, but the, the heart remains, and that's pretty good. So now we have attorney Amanda Carpo, who's the president of Kittleson Carpo Consulting. She's uh, This is an international firm. It's a firm where they have a joint venture with a Singapore company called Incorp. They're doing corporate compliance and business registrations. And aside from that, she's also managing director of KMC Solutions, which is the biggest co-working space in the country in terms of number of square meters, right? So let's all welcome my fellow, actually, hindi na ako fellow triathlete, siya lang na iwan na triathlete. She's the triathlete champion and my former teammate, Attorney Amanda Carpo. Hi, Amanda. You there? Show yourself on the video there. Hi, Joel. Thanks for inviting me here. And thank you to attorney Sister Ruth. Um, it's a great opportunity to be able to speak with you today. I had no such holy aspirations. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, I'm, glad that, uh, I'm glad to have the chance to speak today and talk about this very pressing topic. Okay. So this is our format. There will be a presentation by uh, Undersecretary Ruth. And then we'll have some reactions and comments from Matorni Amanda. Sorry about the spelling. And then we'll, the three of us will have a discussion. Now, during that time, the, because of the large volume of attendees, usually it'll be put on mute first. So put all your comments in the chat tab, post your Q&A in the Q&A tab, post your questions in the Q&A tab. We will collate as much of them. We'll put them all together so at least Pagsasama-sama po natin yung mga questions para hindi po natin pwede kasi sagutin lahat. Pero pagsasama-sama natin kung alin yung same topic and same concern. After that, we're gonna op open this up to a live Q&A after the panelist discussions. Okay, so you can ask directly after we have collated some of the questions. Okay, so with that, I'm now gonna... Okay. So there it is, uh, guidelines on rental payments under the ECQ, MECQ, and GCQ. We um, have three. If sorry. You're pressing the presentation. Oh, yeah. OK. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Joel. Uh, and hi, attorney Amanda. OK, let's do this. Um, we have three memorandum circulars issued by Secretary Lopez of the Department of Trade and Industry. We have MC 20-12, this was issued 
on April 4, um, while we were starting on the enhanced community quarantine, we had to, uh, the, the application of this memorandum circular was only up to the enhanced community quarantine. At that time, we did not know that we will have MECQ, that we will have GCQ, and that we will have MGCQ. So um, application uh, at that time was only upon the lifting of the enhanced community quarantine, not knowing that some areas would still be in MECQ and, and so on and so forth. And then we issued a memorandum circular 20-29. Initially, uh, DTI, this was issued sometime in the latter part of May, maybe around May 29. Um, we wanted that um, businesses would start paying the rent upon the lift, upon the, the time that they resume going back to work or that, that the time that businesses were allowed to open. Unfortunately, a lot were a lot of businesses were still on MGCQ. I mean, on MECQ, so hindi pa rin pwede mag, mag operate and, and people will still not have income. So we again revised it and issued MC20-31. But the applicable provisions of 20-12 and 20-29 that are not in conflict with 20-31 are still in effect. So we start. Uh, first, the, I have to let you know that the application of these memorandum circulars are on micro, small, and medium enter enterprises. You would all know that the Magna Carta for MSMEs provide the classification. Micro would have a total asset or capitalization of 3 million pesos and below. Small enterprises would have a capitalization of not higher than 15 million, but not also not lower than 3 million pesos. So that's 3 million and 1 pesos to 15 million pesos. 15 million pesos, uh, 15, 15 million and 1 pesos to up to 100,000 pesos, uh, up to 100 million is medium. Okay. So the memorandum circular, memorandum circulars on rent were issued because of the Bayanihan to Heal as One Act. There is a specific provision there. If I remember, it's section 4 dash B, 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 double B, uh, that says that residential rents, uh, the residential tenants shall be given a 30 day grace period before um, the landowner will start collecting from the time of the lifting of the enhanced community quarantine. When the Bayanihan to Heal as One Act was uh, promulgated, there was no uh, no idea yet of uh, MECQ and GCQ and the rest of it. So that is history. And then IATF, in one of the resolutions by acquiescence of the president, um, issued this resolution including commercial rents. Um, so that's the that that's the story of the three memorandum circulars that we have. Uh, to apply to both residential and commercial rents. Concession on residential and commercial rents shall be in accordance with the, with the provisions of the memorandum circular. The due date of residential, both residential or commercial rents shall begin, I mean, the 30-day the grace period on residential and commercial rents shall begin upon the lifting of the enhanced community quarantine, provided that the rents due fall within the declared community quarantine, whatever it is, if it's ECQ, if it's MECQ or GCQ, uh, ito lang tatlo po. Uh, we are not going towards MECQ. I mean, we are not computing anymore the rental payments due during the MECQ. So, so we, we compute only until GCQ. So that means whatever rental fee was accrued from May, from March uh, 16 up to hopefully June 15, when we move into, uh, when we're done with GCQ. Uh, yun lang, that, that's the only amount that will be covered by the memorandum circulars. Uh, so uh, set forth in memorandum circular number 20-12, the grant by the lessor of a minimum 30-day grace period for residential rent shall start from the last due date 
of the rent or from the lifting of the ECQ, MECQ, and GCQ, whichever is longer. Um, initially, we were thinking of whether or not um, the business or the employment will, would already resume, so we would count the 30-day grace period from then, but uh, it was later on decided that the lifting of the MECQ, MECQ, ECQ, MECQ, and GCQ would be the reckoning dates. This will be without incurring interest, penalties, fees, other charges, and whatever charges that the landlord intends to impose. Also for commercial rents falling due upon MSMEs and sectors not allowed to operate during the ECQ, MECQ, and GCQ, the 30-day grace period shall be computed from the last due date or from the lifting of the ECQ or community quarantine, whichever is longer. An example of this would be uh, if the last due, if my last due date falls on June 14 and GCQ is finally lifted on June 15, the 30 day grace period shall be counted on June 15 and not on June 14. Cumulative amounts of amount of rents falling due within any of the covered community quarantine, like now we have March, March 15, uh, March 16 to April 16 is one month, April 16 to May 16 is two months, May 16 to June 16, that's less than a month already. So uh, two, two and a half months uh, covering uh, accruing during the ECQ, GCQ period sh may be or shall be uh, equally amortized in six month monthly installments following the end of the 30 day grace period. I said maybe because the later on you will see in the slide that the landlord may also give additional uh, concessions to the tenants. She may she or he may extend it to maybe 12 months or maybe uh, 18 months. Also, the six month period may also have uh, 12 installments. Maybe the, the tenant and the landlord can agree on a 1530 installment payment um, or whatever, maybe one month, maybe also paid weekly. So uh, it will have more monthly installments provided that the minimum of six months is there. This will also have, of course, no interest, no penalties, no fees or other charges or whatever other um, um, burdens that the tem that the landlord will impose. It is not allowed. However, there is also a concession granted to the lessors if the tenant intends to pay or has paid or has uh, issued post dated checks and she did not uh, request for deferment of the payment or the deposit of the checks, lessors are not obliged to refund residential and commercial rents already paid before or during the period of the community quarantine. So if, uh, if I made advance payments in March uh, for, for months following April and May, um, lessor, the, my landlord will not be obliged to return it to me during the enhanced community quarantine. And the DTI also enjoys lessors of commercial spaces rented out to MSMEs to adopt any of the ways to extend their generosity. These are uh, giving a discount, uh, provided a discount on the amount due, the total amount due, or uh, maybe waiving the rental payments um, due from the tenant. A lot of mall owners and big businesses uh, have done this. That's why we included in the original in the original provision of MC 20-12, the recognition of landowners who will provide additional concessions to their tenants. And then they can also agree to renegotiate their terms, uh, either extend the six month period to 12 months or maybe at least eight to 10 months or whatever other concessions that the landlord may give. Um, and then, ito pala yun, I had a slide for that. So totally or partially waive the commercial rents and then rene renegotiate the lease term agreements and then maybe grant a reprieve or a, a discount or a reduction in the amount of rent due. And then other recourses to mitigate the impact of uh, the quarantine, like what I said, extend, maybe extend the number of months 
in favor of the tenant. No eviction for failure to pay uh, may be made by the landlord for payments due or accruing during the enhanced community quarantine or since the enhanced community quarantine took effect until the GCQ, until the general community quarantine is lifted. Um, so meaning the landlord may not demand for the tenant to vacate the premises if the amount, if the rental payments due were accrued during any period of quarantine from ECQ to GCQ. Unless, of course, it's going to be a different story altogether if the rental payment was accrued prior to the implementation of the ECQ on March 17, 2020. Lessors may be held criminally liable, or criminally, civilly, or administratively liable for failure to abide by the relevant laws, rules, and regulations, particularly the Memorandum Circular 20-12, 29, and 31. This is specifically provided in the Bayanihan to Hidas 1 Act the penalty of at least two months uh, imprisonment or a fine of 10,000 pesos to 1 million pesos will be imposed um, against the landlord who violates the, the memorandum circular. The, um, of course, lessees who refuse to pay or do not pay their obligation will also be held liable, but of course, this will have to um, be under different laws. Um, after the, 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 the grace period and the, the extended six month period of amortization has been agreed and uh, extended or uh, anything beyond what is agreed upon uh, uh, based on the memorandum circulars will be a cause for the, for the landlord to go after the tenant. He may go to court, file an eviction, or whatever other remedies may, that may be available to him legally. Any concern or complaint may be brought to the DTI, uh, particularly the Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau for assistance, either in person or electronically. You may call us at DTI 1384 or send us an email at consumercare at dti.gov.ph so that we can provide assistance to you. We will have to go through mediation um, call on the call on the landlord to come, or maybe through via conference or via email. Uh, as long as we are able to communicate with them, if you provide provide us the necessary information that we need. If there is a contract, um, the the parties may bring a copy of the contract, and then we will see what will happen during mediation. But of course, it's always going to be in favor of the tenant by virtue of Republic Act 11469. The, like I mentioned earlier, it's the Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau that will handle the complaints. We shall follow all existing procedural rules and regulations governing complaints handling and enforcement. And this may apply without prejudice to the application of acceptable alternative dispute resolution proceedings. There may be other uh, fora that the parties might choose, but the Fair Trade and Enforcement Bureau is the one mandated in the memorandum circulars. And we are open and willing to accept any complaint so that we can assist both tenant and the landlord. In case of criminal cases that may be filed after uh, whether or not an administrative resolution is arrived at, uh, a criminal case may be filed against the, the landlord for violation of the memorandum circulars and effectively Republic Act 11469. Uh, complaint may be filed with the um, prosecutor's office under the Department of Justice for them to determine whether there is probable cause to charge the landlord. Uh, of a crime of the violation of 11, RA 11469. Of course, this will also be without prejudice to the filing of administrative complaints before the Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau or also the filing of civil, civil cases against the, against the landlord. So that is the end of the slide. Uh, for DTI issuances, particularly those issued during the enhanced community, well, the community quarantine, please scan the code so you can get all the issuances that we have. 
uh, it will lead you to the Department of Trade and Industry website, and you will see all our issuance there that may may or may not pertain to MSMEs. But please share so that your families and your friends can also benefit from knowing the issuances that we have made. Madaming salamat po, uh, magandang hapon. Hmm. Thank you, Yusek. Thank you very much. And dami na po nating questions. <laughs> Exciting oh, discussion. Wow. So pa react muna natin si ano, si Attorney Amanda, di ba, to your presentation. Yes, please. Thank you, Yusek. Yes. So, Attorney. Um, hi. Uh, thank you for the presentation, uh, Attorney Ruth. I think that it was uh, very good. Um, the DTI circulars, in all honesty, have come as such a relief for the uh, private sector. No, just wanna. Um, I think there are a lot of expectations because right now, uh, for real estate purposes, it's like landlord versus tenant, and everybody has concerns. And I think I have to um, congratulate the DTI for providing. I mean, this is actually the uh, the floor. Uh, for the for any negotiations with the lessor, so I think uh, expectations wise, uh, the government can come in only so far to mingle with the rights, the commercial rights of the of the landlords and the tenants. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so I, I I really think that the the Bayanihan Act and the DTI circular was uh, very important legislation. Um, so what I want to ask for clarification purposes, I mean, not really a clarification, but in practical terms uh, for enforcement no, of the, mm. of the uh, or eligibility for the uh, uh, DTI circular. When, when they mention businesses that have ceased operations due to the ECQ or the MECQ or the GCQ, um, are these businesses that uh, have not uh, have have not been able to operate, or are specifically um, identified as not being able to operate. Because even during ECQ, for example, if you're an essential business, you can't have some some people did not have the ability to make their people come in. The 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 kahera or the whatever was not able to report, and so they had to close. So uh, is there a strict distinction between who ceased operations during um, the ECQ, ECQ and those who are allowed to operate? Um, there is none. We understand that uh, a lot of businesses were also allowed to operate during ECQ, but um, their income has significantly been reduced or has significantly been affected, like the restaurants. Uh, we did, we allowed food establishments to com continue operating, but dine-in was prohibited. So they were only allowed takeout or delivery. And so while the, the business continued to operate, they, they were also significantly affected. So that will, uh, they will also be covered by the memorandum circulars on rent. That's good. Um in terms of, of validating their eligibility under the MSME, uh, how, how is that? Is that by audited financial statements or what's the proof that the DTI uh, would need? For micro businesses, uh, we understand that um, they probably do not have a complete set of documentation, but we, of course, we hope they do. Um, but they can just provide us any proof or oper of operation. And then uh, the business, we would know anyway, we will verify and visit the site um, if necessary so that we can confirm that they are actually operating and renting the place as a micro, small, or medium enterprise. But whatever document they have, usually, well, uh, how do I say this? We hope that all MSMEs have business permits to operate their businesses so they can bring a copy of that uh, document. And so that would be sufficient proof for us to, to verify. Okay. Uh, okay, thanks. Any other clarification? Or should I, should I read out some of the questions already from the floor? Oh, sure. I mean, I was just going to ask what the future plans, uh, ah. if there's any more circulars coming out or, or what, are, what are you going to tackle? I mean, there's some issues now of 
we're just one week into GCQ and um, you know some businesses are requiring things like COVID testing for the for the uh, uh, res the residents or the or the tenants in the building. You know, is this extra cost? Does DTI have any other uh, upcoming circulars maybe that are in the works that that we can look forward to? Uh, yes, we're actually in the process of drafting it. The this issue on condominium association dues and probably will cover also the requirement of condominium building owners to have everyone coming in tested. Uh, we understand that there have been concerns on this matter where um, a non-resident, but the owner of an establishment goes in to visit the, his property and then gets charged of 1,000 pesos for um, the visit and then the whatever for whatever reason is being charged and the requirement of testing uh it, we also issued there is a dti dole interim guidelines on covid prevention in the workplace and it has been very clear uh in that uh circular also from the department of health issuance that employers need not uh, submit all their employees for testing except those that are suspected of having COVID or those that show uh, symptoms of the COVID virus. Thanks. That's very helpful. Thank you. Actually, thank you, uh, to, thank you Amanda, and then uh, you say Ruth. So actually, there's um, the, this is just a start of a series where we will have, this is going to be a, basically a forum where SMEs can actually ask the DTI directly because we know that uh, most of the interactions have been one way where the DTI announces it and then and then uh, the news you know asks the question directly but we cannot that's why this is a good forum that we can directly ask the one in charge of consumer protection which we have already here right so I've grouped some of the questions and and please feel free to answer both attorney Amanda and music Ruth so this is one um, this is a combination of the questions of Amy Cabrecus and Jenny Santiago. So the DTI memo says grant of 30 day grace period commences from lifting of the covered quarantine or the date the tenant resumes employment, whichever is longer. So they wanted some clarity on the, the term, whichever is longer, right? So, so does that mean, uh, uh, I guess it's a clarification of that term, whichever is longer and maybe one can cite an example for that particular uh, uh, issue. Okay. Uh, yes, Joel, thank you. I cited an example earlier and I just want to make a correction. Uh, this is one provision of MC 20-29 that we removed yung, um, at the time of the business operation or at the time of resumption of employment. We removed that and stuck to uh, the lifting of the community quarantine or the, mm. uh, what was that earlier? The lifting of the community quarantine or the due date, uh, yeah. the last due date uh, falling within the ECQ. Like if my due date is, um, like I, I said earlier, if my due date was June 14 and MECQ in Metro Manila is lifted on June 15, the reckoning period will be June 15 because that will have a longer, that will provide me a longer time. So for example, June 15 was uh, the, the, the GCQ was lifted. Right? So I have a 30 day grace period mm -hmm. for the, so the, the next time the landlord can really collect from me is July uh, 14. 30 days it, after. Yes. It actually starts the day after if it's lifted on June 15, chapre, one day. And so the day after that, uh, that's when the 30 day uh, grace period starts. So counting 30 days from June 16 would be July 15. Yes. So that's the only time the, the tenant, the, the, the landlord can collect, but they cannot collect the whole amount as described. Right? And co collecting yes. Is basically the amortized uh, mm -hmm. portion of the unpaid rent. Yes, for the because past, this... mm, for the past two and a half months, parang ganon. Yes, because the six month period is also mandated under the memorandum circular. 
Okay. So basically, yung, so since the March 15 was the start of the ECQ, and if June 15 was the end of the M, you know, uh, the GCQ, then there's two and a half months of rent that's uncollected. Amortization starts uh, July 16 for the two and a half months of unpaid rent. That's the that's the general. And my understanding is right. I'm I'm asking this from a layman's perspective. Okay, so. So the, the question of, I have this question related to that. For example, here from Jet Teves Manalo, even though the GCQ or the ECQ or the MCQ has been lifted, her question is for schools who are renting spaces, they cannot use their facility because they are not allowed to have face-to-face -face classes as announced by DepEd. So how do they resolve the issue that they're not allowed to operate so, so they're paying rent because it's a rented area, but then they're not allowed to accept students. So in a way, they, uh, they're not operating in, in the way they should be operating, as in zero, which, which I know is the fact, right? We're not allowed to operate <laughs> according to the president until a vaccine is found. So that, that's a big question for her. So that's, that's a question straight out from a school. Um, Joel, they can bring it to us to the Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau and we'll help them mediate with the landowner. And then probably we can convince the landowner, both landowner and tenant, to come to a compromise so that we can we can solve the issue and then make both both of them happy. Well, of course, maybe one will have to give in for the other, but at least we can help mediate. Because we understand, oh, oh merong, may, may mga businesses pa rin that are not allowed to operate like schools or mga learning centers or tutorial yes. services. Yes, we understand that. And events, events also, event companies are also not allowed to operate big events. Yes. So, yes, yes, that's right. So question on that one, uh, Attorney Amanda. Yeah. From it's, you know, uh, DTI will mediate, but until how far... When, when you have the landlord and, for example, the school owner or the event company are there trying to find a compromise, yeah. how is that really settled, you know? Because right. they, both, they both have their, their, their situation, especially if the landlord's only source of income is the rental. Eh? May mga ganun tayong mga kaibigan na hindi na nagtatrabaho, biglaan lang wala na silang kita for this month. Di ba? So... Until how far is it from a legal perspective when two people negotiate that one? Yeah, so first, um, you know, government's role in this, I mean, is because of the public welfare and because of the pandemic, that they're actually stepping in, you know, which, is, which is a good thing. Um, so you have the non-impairment clause in the Constitution, which basically says that government's not going to step in to to change the terms and conditions between uh, between parties. Remember that the contract between landlord and tenant is uh, is a commercial one, and both have commercial interests. So I think everybody should keep in mind that the goal is to have to come to an equitable uh, resolution of any kind of conflict, and with that. It will always depend on the contract that you've entered into. So one of the important clauses that you need to look into uh, in any lease agreement is the is if it's there any agreement on force majeure or the caso fortuito or 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 what you call uh, unforeseen events. So um, safest cause is you know if on the tenant side I say I don't want to pay rent. There was a COVID pandemic um, and. And I was prevented from using my office. Uh, but the lease contract says that, you know, uh, on the side of the landlord, um, hey, I have bills to pay too. I have a mortgage. I have a loan. I have interest to the bank. I have maintenance fees. I have, uh, I have to pay utilities, et cetera. I have to still pay the staff that, uh, that manages the building, et cetera. So both have, both have concerns. And when you come to the contract that they have the lease agreement, you'll see where they allocated the risk. So if they specifically mentioned that in a pandemic, no matter what happens, let, let's say that's their unforeseen event, if in a, your safest position in a pandemic, 
whatever happens, you have to pay rent. Um, so you have to watch out for that in the agreement, right? Um, if there's a clause, it will be that interpretation, right? And, and if and I would have to argue that if there's no clause there, um, because the COVID pandemic is a temporary situation that did not make things impossible. Fortunately, the rent the rent still falls due, and government really is not is not the one to enforce that. That's really a, a business decision at the end of the day. I mean, I think the government is there to help and to push you towards a resolution, which is why in the DTI circular, they're saying, um, you know, landlords can be more generous with sort of the assumption that the landlord has the, has the advantage. Um, so in, in the so, end, um, government, parang you said, diba? you're there to, you know, basically as the referee, but yeah. not the enforcer. You're basically as government, diba? You say referee kayo, pero hindi kayo enforcer na dapat ito gawin mo, di ba? In the end, mm -hmm. you just bring us, you bring the two parties together. But yes, end, it's, still, right. it's still the two who will have to work it out. And that's where the hard part is, no, uh, attorney Amanda, because that's where yeah. both lawyers yeah. will now have to. Yeah, if, co if Congress said uh, all landlords must waive the rent um, completely, then that's you know that's, that's clear. Uh, yeah but there's no such thing as that gonna, yeah. somebody's on the losing end of that because let's say you tell that to the landlord then the landlord it's repercussions down the line so all these all these uh it's all connected it's all connected no like um the, the welfare of your tenant is your welfare that's your that's your cash flow that's your that's your business right that's why some of these uh larger companies with a little more uh with a little more Cash and a little more foresight would say, like SM Group and Ayala said, gave the rent. Uh, that's on their own volition, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, because they know that we need to keep those tenants for a long term. But not everybody, not everybody has that um, has that power, no. So actually, what to talk about waiver? I'll ask uh, you say this question. One was asking, and she prefers to be anonymous. She has a food cart business in the mall and she has not been able to open this month because she has no stocks and no delivery. And then the lesser wave rental and miscellaneous charges up to 70% waiver. So she's asking if she can insist for more because she has no stocks and right. no waiver of the charges. So because she can't basically operate her business, right? So her question is, can she insist for more than the 70% yes, waiver? Mm -mm. Thank you, thank you. Um, I agree with Attorney Amanda with what she was saying earlier. It's upon the vol volition of the landlords. Government cannot intervene in contracts. That's why all we did was to defer payment. We cannot ask the landowners to waive uh, rentals. Uh, we cannot dictate upon them because we know that it is a mutual obligation between the parties. And it's actually goodwill of the landlords waiving or the waiving rental fees or discounting rental fees or extending a, extending a longer term uh, for amortization and uh, because of this all we can do all government can do is mediate and appeal to help you help the tenants appeal to the landlords to provide a bigger concession but as to requiring them to waive the rental fees government cannot do that and the only the only one who can do that is for the are the tenants to make the appeal to the landlord okay so we have a thank you actually i just want to make a comment and i think uh Tony amanda said that i mean what what the dti has done with this circular is really the best that can be done right within the context of the law right because uh um, if you want any waiver of your rent it's really congress but what dti has done is really i guess push the envelope on what is fair to most but also taking into account that we all have to survive there are both the tenant and the lessor i mean i mean the tenant and the landlord i mean we all have to survive we're all businesses um i have this interesting case he said that uh, um from Maricel Pangindian, his, his lease ended on May 25. 
And then obviously he got affected by the ECQ, yeah. but the landlord would not release his gate pass until, until I guess he pays, right? So, <laughs> because it just so happened his lease ended there and then he could actually go. But then the, I guess the, from a landlord perspective, I won't release you until you pay, right? Yeah. So, what is the situation there? Because, of course, you said there's a six months grace period, but of course, the landlord says, "Alang alang pa alising kita ngayon, de ba? Bakit di ka na pumalit?" What's uh? How do you look at that? These are for everybody whose rents are ending within the ECQ or GCQ yeah. situation. It's it's clearly a mediatable case, actually, uh, because of course. Any landlord would want security also that they are going to be paid and that yes. assuming that the, 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 the contract ended already and that there was a gate pass requirement to be issued by the landlord. They can bring it to us and we'll help them mediate. But um, the law is clear. Uh, the 30-day grace period should be provided by the, by the landlord to the tenant. And then the amortization also of, third, of six months Whatever security may be provided by the tenant would be good, also as part of goodwill uh, to be given to the landlord. So yan ano uh, again usapan na lang yan, di ba? Mm -hmm. Ang daming usapan ngayon. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Grabe. I could just imagine all of the discussions happening. Um, so here's about check payments. It'd be interesting, uh, Tony Amanda and you, Sekou. So this is from the landlord, the man. Diba? So they said on GCQ, we can collect, they said we can, they can collect the checks if there are checks, if there are people. This is from James Loreno. And then the supporting questions, all landlords, see Carla Valera, the man. As the landlords are not required to return the payments or PDCs, which covers the quarantine period, are they required to defer the subsequent rents due for a period of equipment? You know, because they have it, and if they decide to deposit it, are they required then to defer the rest? Uh, Joseph uh, Ranola said, yeah, again, PDCs, diba? Uh, prior to the community quarantine. So, so can the lesser be said to be in violation of the memorandum for not applying the provided grace period? Diba? Because they have the checks now. If they, kumbaga, illegal ba sa kanila na i-deposit? You know? I, I think you mentioned that, but I think they wanted some clarity. Hawak na nila yung check eh. They decide to deposit it. Is no, that illegal? There, if there was no appeal whatsoever or no request whatsoever from the tenant to defer depositing the checks, um, there is nothing illegal with depositing the check. It will be a different story altogether. However, if the checks are dishonored for insufficiency, because the tenant will always may always use the memorandum circulars and the Bayanihan to Heal as one act as a defense. Yeah. Uh, I, so meaning, me, sorry, okay. meaning Joel, if the if the checks were deposited and were returned for for insufficiency or whatever reason. The landlord cannot, um, well, the tenant will always use the memorandum circulars as a defense. And is that defensible, attorney, Amanda? Yes, I mean, what, what I was actually going to say is that as the tenant, you would probably call the bank and say stop payment on, yes, yes. on the checks. I mean, if you're yeah. on top of things. And then if you're the landlord, I mean, you would hesitate uh, to deposit those checks they're post dated, so normally it will be one. You're, you're talking about one month, one yeah. month, one month, one yeah. month. It's not yet. It's not yet due. No, I, I would hesitate to deposit just because you're uh, you're beginning a battle, um, knowing yeah. that the DTI yeah. circular. So unahan talaga to inform the lessor. Hey, there's this. It's a good thing the DTI circular came when it did. Number mm -hmm. one, it kicks the door open to communication about. You know, but prior to this, it was like I want a fifty percent discount on my rent. I want, I want to waive the rent. So this gave at least. Oh, now we have a DTI circular. We have to talk about the deferment first. Mm -hmm. Then the second thing is, okay, I'm just gonna deposit all the checks now, and and bahala ka na to to we'll fight it out in court or or whatever you know. So um, 
So you want to hesitate on doing that given the circular. It will give you pause before you become too aggressive on your tenants, knowing that again, all the tenant, the landlord, their employees, et cetera, all the businesses are connected. So some somewhere along the line, even if you think it's just between the two parties, it will always be, it will always affect everybody down the line. So it's always like, bayanihan, we have to like work yeah. together on it. Mm-hmm. And it's really hard. I mean, everybody has personal interests involved, financial interests involved. Everybody has been Okay. Actually, speaking of bayanihan, we have one example of a, of a lessor. Nagbayanihan siya. Her name's mm-hmm. Rachel K. So she gave, we are a lesser of commercial space and our tenant has not been able to open the business because hindi siya essential business. So they gave them a 100% waiver. Oh, di ba? Bayanihan si Ms. Rachel K. Binigyan na lang wave. Binigyan niya yung 100% of her tenant. But now she's asking, what would be her proof naman to the BIR that they granted a 100% waiver? Di ba? Because the BIR might be seeing looking at, oh, nasan yung revenue mo dyan, di ba? Oh, during the audit report. So that's her question, di ba? Uh, she decided to, out of bayanian, give a waiver. Now, what is her proof to the BIR? How can she prove to the BIR na wala siya talagang kinuwang rent? Oh, ayan, bayanian example. But siyempre, they want to also show that hindi naman sila kumita. Yeah, and that would be reporting of revenue since there was nothing, there's nothing booked yet until it depends it depends on their accounting practices but the the revenue should not be booked yet I mean they're not booking those post dated checks until they until the time actually comes uh for until payment the cash so comes still, in. Oh, oh yeah and whether or not uh condonation of debt uh that's a whole other that's a whole other tax issue whether that get to the uh whether that's a benefit i mean if they didn't claim they're not claiming a deduction they're going to be claiming a deduction for the for condonation of debt, mm. right? Because they're they're they it, it depends whether or not they reported such income. Hindi nga lady report the income. Eh. They're gonna actually, I guess they just want to show the BAR talaga na on nagano kami nagwave, de ba? So that's considered condonation of debt when they wave it. Yeah, I I would think so because yeah. uh, the rent is due and then so there's there's no you're you're waiving. Uh, I I would assume that for BIR purposes, maybe you could produce the waiver, a notarized waiver of the of the rent, and that's also for purposes of of uh, the lessee not having some assurance na hindi na ko habulin ng lessor ko because she said it in writing. Okay. Um. There's this, uh, there's this uh, question that on criminal liability. question <laughs> So from Jenny Santiago and Maria Alversado, most of them are asking both about criminal liability. So why does 2029 say that even the lessee can be criminally held liable? From what she understands, by any hand, act only prescribes criminal liability upon the lesser. Okay, the other question one from Maria Alversado is that I have a client who was in default since January 2020 in Laguna. She only started paying partially this June. She still has 2.5 to make 2.5 months to pay. Is that is she part of the Bayanian Act because her default was prior to the lockdown? So is eviction even legal? So you have these two criminal liability questions because of the Bayanian Act. Okay, um, Joel. On the first question, uh, if you remember, we said earlier that we issued Memorandum Circular twenty thirty one correcting twenty uh, twenty nine. So there is no criminal liability on the part of the tenant okay. under the Bayanihan to Heal as One Act, but he may be liable uh, under other laws that uh, that mm. are applicable. Uh, for on the second question, uh, payment. Payment of rental dues were uh, began in Ju- January of this year. Mm. The only coverage of memorandum circulars, DPI MCs on rent, are the community quarantines. Okay. So outside March, outside March 16, 
to whenever we are going to transition to MGCQ in Metro Manila, but in other areas, there are already MGCQ areas. So uh, only this period is covered by the arrears incurred by the tenants. Outside of that, um, ibang, ibang usapan naman yun, they have to pay that. Okay. Not, not covered also by the 30 day grace period and the six month amortization. Anything outside the, the, the community quarantine accrued rentals. Okay. So, my question, Dita, from uh, Chiki R, which is in relation to that. So, parang, what if the GCQ extends to 12 months? <laughs> the lessee is. Allowed to hold payments and they'll have to GCQ because anything can happen, diba? So how will the lesser survive naman raw? We we understand that we're not even sure if we're transitioning into MGCQ by June 16, and we don't know yet. Um the if you notice the laws evolve, uh we amend them or revise them accordingly as the need arises. So if this is going to be extended until December, we'll come up with new guidelines. Yeah, so unfortunately for everybody, uh, we call this the VUCA world, diba? Volatile, uncertain, complex. And uh, what's the last one? I is, um, forgot. But everything's uncertain. So we're actually moving on a day to day basis. So, but I think, I think we can just really trust, as you can see from the, the track record of DPI, diba? That they look at both sides, right? Because it's important to see both sides, eh? and I think the DTI has shown us that they always look at both sides of the coin. I have this yes, question. we're very we're very fair, naman. We exactly. you're right. We we look at all sides actually. Hmm. Uh, this is a question. I won't name na lang the person, para she's not. But it is a a, a question of principle. So sabi niya, I, she's obviously a lesser. So why lessers? Why are lessers not allowed to collect the same as a Meralco and PIR? Who are who are collecting even during the GCQ? So, so parang why are the lessers only allowed to collect after GCQ? So parang she was just questioning. I, I just put it out there. I, I think it's a good mm -hmm. question to put. Parang the others are collecting. Bakit, why are they as the lessers who are smaller businesses, di ba? Hindi naman lahat yan malalaki. While the big, yeah, Meralco, they, they can keep on collecting. So parang, it's just a question from their part. Meron ba tayong deferment from Meralco and Water? I can't remember. Meron din, four months. Yeah. Four months. Four months, yeah. And same with BIR. Um, they're, they're mo they've moved the tax deadline. So to a um, few days. June 15th of June. Yeah, to the 15th yeah. of June. So there was deferment naman. For every, we're we're actually, uh, and the same went for like uh, other other companies. I think I think uh, the private sector has, private sector and uh, government have also have done whatever it is that they can, um, to you know defer. what they can contribute yeah. to to defer to defer. Parang they're not yet giving everything up. They're just uh, holding their breath. Okay, thank you. So just to clarify, even these other basic services are also deferring. Okay, so all of us are deferring and helping each other out. Uh, there's, a, there's a technical question, UCX, I don't know if it's covered in the, the circular. Our mm -hmm. CUSA, common use service area, is that also part of the deferment? No, uh, it's co what covers, what, co what, what uh, I mean, this memorandum circular, applies only to rent, not KUSA. Because you, it's outside the rent, uh, you enjoy the benefit also. I'm not sure if this is going to be covered by the condominium association juice that we're coming up with. Bakapo, yeah. But I'm not sure. I, I will not say anything definite. I, I really don't know right now. Because what we were asked to do is only the condominium association juice. Okay. So, so kusa hindi pala kasama yon. So June na yon talaga. In other words, collection. June siya. Yes. June. Uh -oh. Okay. Well, okay. Um, there's a question naman from a large corporation, di ba? 
It's a, <laughs> you know, thank you for, this is from Art Valentino. Thank you, DTI, for the presentation. My question is, uh, what about consideration for the application of these guidelines for the large enterprises, since the large enterprises are also experiencing financial impact from the pandemic? What expectations do we have for DTI on this matter in support of large enterprises? What can be their resource? Yeah. I think it's a fair question. So, I think they're they're I think they're coming up also with concessions for large enterprises. But right now, the concession is not from DTI, but from the Department of Finance. There is a an implementing rules and regulations issued by DOF on Section Four AA of the Bayanihan Tuhilas One Act on loans. Um, there is a, a grace period as well. And then there's also um, splitting of whatever was incurred during the quarantine. I'm not sure uh, BOF will be the best person uh, to address this, but there is also a concession provided to large companies. Okay. Um, I, just, I just wanted to comment on, yes. on the MSMEs. Uh, just because I have, a, I have a special place in my heart for small, medium enterprises. Um, they're the most affected by by uh, this pandemic, because um, you know the pockets aren't so deep, and it's and it's really a struggle to get uh, a, a small medium enterprise to to succeed. No, and I, I mean I've always felt that that's sort of like strong backbone to the economy. So I mean I get I get that. And then with respect to the uh, larger corporations, um, I get that also because there's a ripple effect. No, so if if a large corporation goes under because they don't have um, they don't have uh, the same benefits and, as an MSME that will trickle down the line. Uh, you know, people are going to get, uh, people will lose their employment because they're going to have to retrench employees. So it, it, it also has, it also has a, a, a ripple effect down the line. Although the MSMEs are, are clearly the first in line for, uh, the first in line for the, uh, for the pain of, uh, of COVID-19's uh, economic effects. So whether it's large or not, we have this, uh, I have several in the q and I won't name na lang their names on air, but at least you said you can see it. So a few of the landlords who are in this, uh, in this live cast, and they've they put their names there, and you can see it later, is that they feel that this circular is, is, is more towards the lessee. And mas hirap sila as the landlord. So, because the landlords are also MSMEs, diba? So parang, they're all saying, we're all part of the MSME community. I just so happen to be the landlord, he just happens to be the lessee. But for their circular, I'm just summarizing all of their comments. So parang, para naman sa lessee, eh, pare-pareho naman tayo MSME. So maybe you can just comment on that, on that feeling, diba, that they're mm -hmm. sharing now. We, we understand that. Uh, we have received a lot of complaints as well, a lot of comments that um, DPI leans towards the MSMEs or the businesses, the tenants uh, mm -hmm. in general. But uh, for one, it is always assumed that because you are, you are a landlord, you, are, you have more than the tenant. And then second, there is always the uh, advance payment, the down payment, the deposit that the landlords can use, can use temporarily during the pandemic or during the time that uh, we asked for the deferment of payment. So in, that's why we never asked for waiver. We just asked for deferment because we know that the landlords can still make use of the down payments or deposits that were paid to them by the lessors, uh, by the tenants in advance. But please uh, take note that these deposits or down payments or whatever um, payments were made beforehand cannot be applied to the rent unless you agree with the tenant. Uh, the rule is still the 30-day grace period and the deferment of the, of the rental payment, whatever accrued during the community quarantine. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, the truth is, Diva, it's difficult for everybody. Um, uh, you know, like Amanda can uh, maybe can give us a a lowdown because she, uh, you know, as the biggest uh, as the biggest uh, co-working space, 
a lot of the startups are actually in your space. And maybe you can just update us how the situation is among all of these startups, you know, because all of these startups, the, the reason they're in their co-working spaces is actually they want some flexibility. So maybe just uh, this is just to give everybody a, a lowdown of, you know, how are the startup companies, particularly in the, in the co-working spaces such as yours, because you're a big indicator, uh, you know, going through all of, are they saying that they'll have to stop Muna uh, being in, in, in the co-working spaces and, and do other things? What's the current uh, situation on the ground? Well, startups, the small, medium enterprises are really, said, really having a, a difficult time now. So it's really a test of their pivot their business. They, they can they find funding? Um, you know, so so it's re it's really a challenge. It's it's really a challenge. Uh, it's really a challenge to their business model now. Uh, whether whether they can succeed, um, our our position in KMC Solutions is that we're trying to give them the flexibility to succeed. So we're trying to give them uh, the most convenient uh, the most convenient solution for them. So that they don't have a huge capital outlay, so that they can rely on us for, for flexible office space because they need to be able to be flexible in this, in this situation. Um, but but I do see the pain of a lot of like uh, startups and 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 uh, medium sized enterprises just because uh, right now cash cash flow is king, so it's a test of their it's a test of their business model. It's a test of um, how they can address the needs of their customers and their business today. And that's another whole issue with that, that, that to me is whether or not they're able to pivot through digitization or, or other means. No? Okay. Yeah. As I said, it's difficult for everybody. I'm just going to address another question that came out uh, from James Loreno. He's asking about Kusa. That's already been answered. Kusa is not involved, so you're so the mall owner can charge you Kusa. That's right, no you say. The mall owner can charge the 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 tenant Kusa. I mean yes, yes, yes. Right? Even uh, though we here. understand it was not waived. While the mall owners waived rentals, uh, they continued to charge Kusa because the mall owners also use that money to keep the air conditioning or the common areas, maintaining them. So here's another landlord who did a lot of Bayanian. So Goodwill, his name, her, her name is Rachel Francisco. So she's a commercial lesser. Nagbayanihan na siya. She already gave two months, uh, no, wave, waiver for her tenant. I guess she... Thank then, you. Then dumating yung circular na kailangan pala ng 30 days period. So does she still need to do that? Nag-wave na raw siya ng two months. In MC in MC 20-12, there's a specific provision recognizing them and appreciating them for waiving uh, whatever rentals are due. So does that mean they, they still have to wait for the, they still have to do the 30 days grace period? Kung nag -wave so, na siya. If they waived it already, that means the tenant will no longer have to pay for the, at least during the community quarantine. Yes. Diba? So wala nang mag apply na 30 days because it applies only to rental fees accrued during the, the community quarantine. Okay. I, okay. Yeah, kasi we need money. So dapat wala ka nang kukolektahin. So in other words, so yes. Okay, we understand. Okay, we'll just go to mga last two questions because we'll, we'll be ending this soon. Um, question to Attorney Amanda. Sample clause in contract. From Tara Milena, could you give a sample COVID clause that other lessors have included in their rental contract? Lessors have, oh, okay. So um, hmm. uh, you're talking probably about a uh, force majeure clause. Yes, yes. And one, uh, you have to define exactly what the force majeure is. So strikes, lockouts, volcanic eruption, etc. Uh, global pandemic, or specifically mention COVID-19. Uh, you know, you can word that however you want. And then the second, the second is the operational clause. And what does that mean? How, so let's 
A, COVID, it's COVID-19 or strike or lockout or volcanic eruption, COVID-19. How does that work in our contract? Meaning if that exists, what are the consequences? Uh, I have to notify you that it exists. I, have, I don't have to pay rent, uh, you know, specify uh, or, that, or that it's suspended or it's not suspended. It will not, it will not be cause for suspension of the rent or it will be. How, how, how do I notify? When, does it, when is it affected? Um, so that's, that's sort of a sample clause. Um, I, 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 can, I, I can't draft one off the top of my head. I do have, I do have many sample force majeure clauses because I have looked at quite a few. Um, but that's it. First, you define you, you define what the force majeure specifically is, and then its consequences. But if you have a general force majeure clause, um, you know, uh, and you could say that that's enough protection for the lessor, because my argument is that uh, uh, it's in it's more in favor it's it's more in favor of the uh, of the tenant to accept it than it is to say nothing. Hmm. And it has to be the one to say, uh, I don't want to pay rent if there if if it's ECQ and it closes down. Uh, so they have they have to specifically ask for that in the contract. Otherwise, I would say the lessor don't if you don't do anything, um, you know, especially with contracts that are a lease contract is an executory, is an executed contract. Once you enter the lease, you get possession. And then your calamity happens. So at that point, um, hmm. it's not. I, I've delivered. I've delivered things to you already. So parang um, your rights. Uh, you you already have some kind of benefit. So you're already on the on the weaker stage. If you can, if, if it's something that's executory, meaning there's still obligations that uh, that the that need to be performed, then you can say that impossible you can then then you can argue the impossibility of performing that obligation if that makes sense so actually there's a you know i we just really have tons of questions so this is what we're going to do i'm going to send it to we're going to send it to uh the dti so they have at least right a, they get the feedback because you know the questions are basically feedback we cannot answer everything but their feedback especially as a as the DTI looks for, as they create additional circulars, right? So, and, um, and you know, uh, you know where to look for Attorney Amanda. If you need more advice, she's, she's, she's the managing director of KMC Solutions and uh, president of, um, of uh, Kittleson Carpo. Easy. I'm the chief legal, not the MD. <laughs> okay, chief legal. So it's very easy to Google. Uh, but what we'd like, there are also a lot of questions already about how to manage tenants in condominiums. Tamang tama yan, you say Ruth, di ba? So I'm going to share a screen of our upcoming webinars, okay? Again, it's all part of the Ask DTI as we, as we give more clarifications about these circulars. I'm just going to share my screen about the, the schedules. And... Sorry. Uh, sorry. Let me just go straight to that uh, screen. We would like to invite all of you to our succeeding webinars, mainly because uh, there's still a lot more to discuss. And so with that, please take a look at our Upcoming schedules. Okay. So this is our upcoming webinars, upcoming live cast, as you can see. So refund, June 17, next week. We'll talk about refunds. Okay. Again, with, with our sister, Yusek Ruth. <laughs> All of these funds will be the one directly there. Diba? Guidelines on fast food restaurants and salon, June 18, same time. Guidelines on condominium fees and association dues, June 24. Yeah, and so all of these questions, and dami dito question, how will we manage uh, guests who are coming into our condos and everything? Yan, tatakal natin yan. And of course, on uh, sorry, June 25, we will tackle 
the guideline on online transactions. Kasi all of us have been buying things online. We need to know what are the guidelines, you know, as we as we uh, go through this new way of doing business. Okay. So with that, with that, we'd like to uh, we'd like to uh, thank you know both our panelists for for their time. Uh, we will make sure that the DTI gets all of your questions. Okay and all of your concerns now, so that at least they have it in the database. Um, uh, if in particular, you really want a, uh, something specific, please email us, you have it. And then what we're gonna do to, um, what we will do is that we will send you the recording of this one. People are asking for the presentation of uh, Yusek Ruth, but anyway, there's a recording, just watch it there, right? So, so with that, Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us, and we'll see you for our next webinars. Thank you, Yusek Cruz. Thank you, Attorney Yes, Amanda. thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you, Attorney Amanda. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, guys, and thank you yes. for uh, giving us a venue to speak out. Good night. Joel, you'll just, you just, you just send us the questions, no? I was beginning to re respond to some, Sana. Ah, yes, we will send them all to you, and then um, we'll ask them to, to email us na lang talaga if there's a lot of them. Uh, but we'll do another format later that somebody should actually be replying while you're talking. Eh, di ba? So, okay. So, Let, all right. I'd like you. to answer some questions as well. I mean, I couldn't type answer <laughs> at the same time. It's a little difficult. But in case you have any questions that you want to ask me yet. Okay, maybe if you can just flash in the in the chat for everybody, uh, Yusek Ruth and Attorney Amanda, maybe you can just put a email if any of your staff or anybody that they can just email to pag may napitin sila. Um, there's an there's a, there's a email naman for the DTI, no, you said, that people can go Oh, yeah. Through. Yes, 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 please. Uh, for the yes. questions, especially on, on tenant and landlord arrangements, they can go to directly to FTEP mediation at dti.gov.ph or consumer uh, care. What is Sorry. It? FTEB, uh, Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau, FTEB Mediation, F -TEB at DTI. Mediation. At DTI, at DTI.gov.ph. FDEV Mediation at... That's, that's Foxtrot Tango Echo Bravo. Okay, that's gov.ph. Okay, so there for these other issues on mediation. And then, uh, Attorney Amanda, what should I type if they... There it is. Info at kitasoncarpo.com. So you can email them directly. Okay. 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 Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Have a good evening. You too. Have Thank a good you, everybody. Thank you.